Yeah, while you're typing, let me probably tell you my like, personal story how this project started. So um, I started my PhD in 2017 and you know, I needed to be very ambitious in my research proposal so that the research would be funded. And uh, so I promised, among many, many other things, I promised to make a ethnographic or ethnomusicological film based on my research. And yeah, of course, I you know, wanted to, to, to start to get inspired, you know, to, to check how the field of ethnomusicological film actually works. And I was hoping that I would just you know, go on Google, make a quick search, and I would find some, some amazing websites or threads, something like thousand ethnomusicological films that you need to watch before you die. Mm -hmm. And I didn't find any, any such a page, any, any even, anything even close. And so I started, uh, in 2017, I started uh, or created a modest spreadsheet just for my purpose. And I, I just was saving many, many films that I was randomly bumping into while doing uh, my research. And then in 2020, in March, I guess everyone here remembers what happened in March 2020. You know, world changed overnight, many things that used to work just stopped working in the way they used to do. And I too was actually, I needed to move to UK, I, I lost access to my office, I lost access to my library, and so on and so forth. And I was jumping back home in Prague on, on gymnastic ball and I just tried really hard to establish my you know, working routine in order to be able to finish my PhD thesis. And I was really struggling and I was trying very, very uh, many various methods. And then I tried uh, what is called Pomodoro uh, technique. Do you guys know Pomodoro technique? It's 25 minutes focusing and then five minutes of break. And it worked quite well for me. It worked quite miraculously. Beside, I just didn't know what to do with this five minutes of break. So, then there was one heureka moment, some, some time late in March 2020, when I realized, wow, I can actually do 25 minutes of writing my thesis and then five minutes of working on this, this little project, which is firstly expanding this, this Google spreadsheet with, with ethnomusicological films, and secondly, to actually make it available for everyone. And here it is. It's been released quite recently. And um, actually, the reason why I made uh, such a long and uh, you know, personal um, uh, personal introduction is that you should really uh, treat it in, with caution and know that this is a mere byproduct of my PhD studies. It's not, not something I really define at the beginning and, and uh, you know, define it as a research project. It's something as a virtue of necessity. So treat it as such. It's far from perfect, as you will see. But anyway, from now on, it's going to be a pretty straightforward presentation. I will uh, show you how uh, this page work at this very moment, that is what feature uh, has it now, and also I will show you uh, what features are planned to be implemented in the near future. So let's have a look. This is the landing page. This is of course a provisional landing page. It will look different. It will tell you the following important information. It's uh, you know, a beta, beta version of this project. And here are the functions that you can use right now and I guess the most essential one is this one, the catalog of the films. And so here you can actually see the almost 1500 films as for now. And if you scroll all the way down, you can load more films. And if you click this loading button uh, many, many times, you will eventually reach uh, the very button. So there's now almost 1500 films and uh, the important thing is uh, the sorting tools at the, at the very top of the page, so you can sort uh, the films alphabetically. You can sort them uh, you know, from newest to oldest, from oldest to newest, um, according to duration and several uh, other cr criteria. Uh, the important thing to know is that the film catalog is an important page because it works as a gateway to film details. So let's have a look on an example. So this is... Uh, a film detail page for uh, the film made in 1933, The Earth Thinks, Sinks, sorry. And um, so, you know, you see the, the basic essentials that is title of the film, uh, the author of the film, uh, duration, the year of completion, and of course you see synopsis, which should give you quite a solid idea what the film is about. And 
really important are these buttons here. So this button actually returns you back from where you come from, that is film catalog or, or search. Then these buttons actually, on the other hand, takes you outside from, from the page. If you click on it, you are redirected to uh, see more information about each film. It, it's usually one button. Uh, in this case, there are two buttons. Uh, so it takes you out of the, of the database. And I guess the most crucial button out of these are this middle one, because it gives you a clue whether and how the film is available for you. So this one is available for free. So what it does is when you click on it, you are redirected to this section of the page, which shows you um, on which platform it is available. So when you click on it, then you're redirected to, to the film and you can actually watch the film. There we go. So this is like first typical instant that, that can occur in, in the database. The second instant is uh, that the, the middle button looks as follows, this dollar sign. So if you click on this dollar sign, it means that the film is not available for free, but it's still available online. And you can, you can click and watch it on some subscription-based platform or some, some platforms that require one of payment. Uh, let me tell you that uh, many of those platforms are actually uh, those uh, to which many of your academic libraries have access, such as Alexander Street, Canopy.com, and so on. Uh, then third instance is this one. It means the film is not available online at all, but luckily enough, we have contact to a producer or distributor. So you are being, again, re redirected to the section of the page where you can... Uh, then search for contact and you can um, you know, contact the person, either distributor or, uh, or producer and see whether they will be you know, willing to give you the film uh, and under what con condition. Okay, that was it. Uh, so that's about it. And one more thing is, I think major contribution of this database are these screenshots because we have the saying in Czech uh, that thousand can tell you more than, uh, sorry, <laughs> that picture can uh, tell you more than thousand words. I guess it's like internationally acclaimed linguistic cliche, isn't it? So I think it really applies here because with checking just a couple of those, a uh, couple of those screenshots, you immediately see, you know, uh, what people are featured in the film, what was the approach of the director, uh, and so on. What was the quality of the film, for example? Uh, and let me tell you, there are now over 10,000 pictures on the server of out of these screenshots, and all of them were actually picked by a human, not by a robot. So it was me actually doing all the labor just to give you the idea about these five minutes of break uh, that I, you know, went through. So yeah, that that was the that was the catalog and and film pages. Now, really essential feature of this database is, of course, full text search. And this works as any other full text search as, as you are used to. So shall we try it together? Any, any suggestion from uh, the audience? What, what shall we look for? Mexico. Okay, let's try Mexico. Sorry about the bias. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> there we go. So we have uh, the following film that concern Mexico. Again, it works same as, as a catalog. So if you, if you click on, the, on any of those, you are uh, redirected to the film detail. If you click the back button, you are back in the search. And uh, these are, you know, it's, it's vaguely defined search, so it looks through many, many fields, such as synopsis, film titles, and so on. Shall we try a different hint? Bali. Okay, let's try Bali. So we have film about, films about Bali. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, you can you can try it yourself on your on your smartphones uh, either now or later on. Uh, now let me turn the page towards uh, roadmap of the project or or what I plan to implement uh, in the future. So first and foremost, there are these analytical keywords. Uh, I don't think it's very necessary to to tell you what the concept of keywords is. Keywords are really important. Uh, for effective and quick search throughout the database that actually can help you to um, you know, uncover related films, that, that is films that are related on the basis of criteria that are not so obvious from the synopsis or from the pictures. Um, so 
uh, these are the analytical keywords. Uh, it, it requires a little bit more work because you cannot just, um, you know, you need to really um, engage with the film. You need to ideally see it, watch it, or uh, actually skim it through to, to assign appropriate keywords. But there's, so there's more work to be done in this respect. If we have time at the end of this presentation, I can give you a bonus tip regarding keywords. But this is, uh, this is a future, uh, definitely a future feature. Then we will have advanced filters, which will, uh, you, you know, again, make your searches as effective as, as possible. You will be able to uh, filter those films that are, for example, English friendly, that are available online for free or available on the platforms uh, that you choose. Uh, another exciting feature is this one. It's search map feature. That is, that will be um, clickable map and depending on region that you are interested in, you just click and you see immediately the films that were made about or in each and particular region. And I'm very happy to tell you that this feature is actually ready on the database side, it just like need, uh, needs some further development on the front end side, but the data is uh, ready actually. Uh, then of course, search by language. Uh, I think this is a, another important criterion about, um, about film, it tells you a lot. Um, you know, what is the language spoken in the film. <laughs> and so far we uh, have indexed this, like, or I have indexed uh, 60 languages, uh, or films in 60 languages, and there'll be definitely more. And this is an important feature, again, that, that makes your search very uh, fast and very accurate. Uh, another important thing is this feature, and I, uh, that is citing, citing the film, uh, I've realized that because I still I'm still working on uh, the uh, on the uh, ethnomusicological film that I promised you know five years ago in, in the research proposal, and I'm afraid that if I counted all the time that I spend in pre-production, production, and post-production, I would probably be able to finish four to five articles, you know, in in super journals, or I would be able to write one monograph. And I think we, that is, ethnomusicologists slash filmmaker, filmmakers, should really give ourselves some credit for uh, this, this you know, amount of work, and we should start citing. And of course, this database will make uh, this very easy for you because it will, uh, you know, there will be these pre-formatted um, citations and there'll also be links to your favorite cita cita citations managers. Yeah, another feature, get a film tip. So if you are just returned from, from work and you are too tired to actually be selecting out of 1500 films, you just uh, select the following criteria and you get a random tip and you have a film to watch for tonight. And now I'm turning towards, towards features that I call like social features because of course I think the sustainability of the project is really in decentralization. That is, it's not gonna be only me um, and my labor upon which it's going to be dependent, but there will be uh, other contributors and so one, one of the important features is other film. Any visitor of the page will be welcome to come and make a suggestion. And of course, it will need to go through some process of mod moderation and, and sort of data uh, cleaning. But so if you have a film in mind that is not yet uh, incorporated in the database, I, I would very much welcome any, any suggestions. Another thing is uh, the comments page. Uh, comments page, again, I, I don't want this to be just that, you know, data sort of collection. I, I really want this to become a platform, a lively platform for um, discussions, film recommendations, film evaluations, and so on. And once we achieve all of these, we could also make some social media outreach. Um, not really sure now because it seems that the social media platforms are falling apart like Twitter or Facebook uh, but I think it's really important just to give or uh, you know not just to have this database for ourselves or researchers ethnomusicologists filmmakers but also make some some effort to um, raise general awareness of general public uh, about ethnomusicological films and Do you have still, uh, four minutes? I still have four minutes. Yeah. Okay. Or, this is. Or... Yeah, that's amazing because I can give you this this uh, pro tip. Uh, I promised you. Uh, this is a bonus tip for everyone who actually attended this panel. 
uh, and yeah, I'm happy that, that you came um, so late. So the, the pro tip, the bonus tip, actually concerned these analytical keywords. Uh, I, I told you that uh, you know, it still requires some database work, and uh, uh, I, I think I've been around one third through the, all the data, that is that these keywords are assigned to one third of the film, films, of, of all films of, in the database. Uh, but I created so, sort of provisional field and I incorporate it into the full text index. So what you can do is basically pick up any, any, of, those, um, uh, any of those keywords and use it in, uh, in uh, the search page. So is there any keyword that, that struck your attention? Can you see it? Vlog. Say it again. Musical blood. Ah, musical blood. Okay, let's try musical blood. And there we have films on so-called musical blood. So this is this is a pro tip. Uh, you know, it's not it's not a, a publicly available feature, but you are very happy to use it. And I'll be working on the data side. And um, yeah, I hope to have the the keyword the actual keywords function ready at some point. So I would like to thank you so much for your attention and especially I, I would welcome any suggestion from your side and of course any, any film that can be incorporated in, into, this, uh, into this project. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much. So are there any questions? Yes. Uh, just, um, I, I assume you're familiar with the um, project that came out of Indiana University, EVIA? The ethnomusicological video for instruction and analysis? No, oh, no, no. Eviada, sorry. Eviada. Because it's digital. Yeah. I just want to give you because that actually offered uh, an opportunity for scholars to upload their own films. Oh, wow. The, um, the problem, I actually reviewed this for a journal once, and the, the, one of the problems was that the learning curve for creating the metadata for the films for the uh, field workers themselves was so steep. That there was, it was such a time constraint that I think very few films went into that database. It seems here that you're much more lax in a way. That is, you, you, you really want to give an opportunity for people to upload their own films. Is that correct? Yeah, it's more, more about like searching through internet through any like films that are relevant for our work. Yeah. So the, it actually uh, contains a lot of film documentaries. That is, film made by professional documentary production, but very relevant for us ethnomusicologists, but also uh, films made by our colleagues. And uh, also there's some like vlogs, for example, that I found interesting uh, on YouTube, and I thought, oh, this is very ethnomusicological, let's put it there. So, so I think um, it's virtue of necessity that I define ethnomusicological films so vaguely that, that I just like incorporate anything that I found interesting for, for us ethnomusicologists, and uh, that's why it's, it's growing relatively fast. Yeah. Yeah. See if I made a note. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Sure. I had a question about your criteria, which I think you were just describing mm -hmm. about what you included, and as Alex was mentioning, would you include raw uh, field recordings as well, or are you looking more for finished projects? Yeah, that's that also a good question. So um, I actually started, um, you know, like seeking through uh, these. Basically, these platforms that actually offer uh, like films, not not like footage, like research footage, and that's why majority of the film is uh, really about like finished documentary film or film that requires some some sort of production, post production, and they have the shape of of some film, that not just like one raw footage. But I'm very happy actually to uh, to consider because this is again very relevant for our work, and I think in the future uh, once you know, I have feeling that there's plenty of films that can be of use. I'm, I may actually start seeking for raw, um, like footage from, from the field and, and start incorporating it into the database too, because like, I think it's, it's super relevant to actually have, have this there. Yeah. Do you have any tips for where to, where to seek for um, like raw ethnomusicological footage? Well, crowdsourcing is your Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need to really check it. I've never heard of it. Thanks so much. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, 
Please, sir, Jack. I'm, I'm amazed at the number of films we have. Where do these come from? I mean, how could you accumulate these? What, you didn't do it yourself, but you say you use robots or something, or what? So, yeah, uh, basically, th these were all matters of these five minutes I mentioned. Uh, and so I started seeking through the, um, especially these, these distribution platforms that are well established, such as, uh, for example, this canopy.com uh, or Alexander Street, because these are, um, this was quite on purpose, because I uh, thought that if an ethnomusicologist with an academic affiliation would start um, you know, searching this database, they would find some films that, that are immediately accessible. And I don't think it's so essential to have their like, films that are in library catalogs. There's VHS in a London library, and you can go there in person and pick it up and watch it on VHS. It's not so relevant. I think, I think the most relevant films are uh, you know, those that are available uh, on, on these platforms. So, so back to your question, I actually started on, on these platforms, uh, you know, filtering films that are about music or about musical topic, and I just adding those that, that were relevant, and it grown this way. And of course, there are a lot of films, uh, you know, once a year you get email, there's a new ethnomusicological film. I said, okay, that's, let's put it in the database. So got quite a snowball technique, I have to say. We yes, have two more minutes. Yeah. I, I was wondering just about your background programming and also if you're doing link checking, which I know you're so busy. Late checking, what do you mean? Well, uh, availability online changes, so, you know, periodically. So I'm wondering if, if you'll build in some process for checking this. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That's, that's a very good question. And I think uh, th this database, if it will rely on, you know, solely on my responsibility, it will definitely be sort of vulnerable in this respect. Because, like you said, links change. Uh, there are, like, plenty of distributors and producers contact that will, for example, cease existing in five years and so on. So, so this is a good point. And I think the, the avenue is to have... Um, like these little buttons, as you saw, at film button, that we would have. Did you find the contact that doesn't work? Let me know. So basically, people will moderate and keep it updated. That's that's how I imagine it. It may work because I I don't think it's uh, sustainable. Me just every day checking whether all informations are correct. So th this is the avenue for for keeping it, keep, keeping it sustainable. Okay, we have one more minute. Yeah. So, just for me to understand, mm -hmm. kind of coming back to these questions that we still kind of bring in. So, how much of this is actually uh, working by itself with the AI? AI? Nothing, nothing. nothing. It's, oh. it's all human. Uh, it's all human. Oh. Uh, only, like, for example, when I told you about these, um, these pictures that every film has, so actually there was a script that helped me to pick up many thumbs, and then I uh, sort of made the selection because you know, if you do like random screenshots that are not uh, particularly nice, but these all were like screenshots that I liked and I thought they are significant for, for each and every film. Yeah, so no work of AI is just like very um, uh, tough human labor in this project. Well, thank you so much, Pedro Moscato. Thanks so much.